my icebreaker question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you're able to design your own ugly sweater. What do you put on it? I'll start. You think about That's it. I'll start. Yeah. I'll go first. Um, I was thinking about this on my drive up. Uh, I would probably, first of all, cut the sleeves because I look better in vests than sweaters. So start yeah. there. Um, I would then have an image of a beach because I love summer. I like beaches. On a sweater, nice. Yeah, on a sweater, right? <laughs> yes. Ugly it's sweaters, a, so I do whatever sweater. I want. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think what I would do is I would probably attach, like, snacks to it because... Let me tell you, it's the best dichotomy between me always wanting a summer body and me always wanting to eat. So <laughs> that would be yeah. my okay, least sweater. Nice. That's, Very a good, that's a good one. Um, I think I would do a picture of Al Pacino on it yes. from Serpico. <laughs> because you think he's ugly. <laughs> no, I actually don't. I actually don't. So but the ugliest actor that I to preface, this, this is in subversive ugly sweater. So mm -hmm. him with the beard... And just like a white, just a white color, and okay. him with the giant beard and hair. That's mine. <laughs> I okay. love it. That's great. Um, I really, I'm looking for a full camo pink suit. Okay. Currently. So if you know oh, of a cool. spot, let me know. Uh -huh. So I think I'm going to go with the same theme towards the sweater. Like nice. obnoxiously girly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> great choice. I think I would do... Uh, a sweater that looks like a shirtless man that has so much hair on his body <laughs> and looks like he's wearing a sweater. I, there are swimsuits yeah. that Very look meta. like that. Thank kind you. of. Yeah. Very Charlie Kaufman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, great answers, guys. I hope you all find these sweaters. Someday. Yeah, I know. Sounds great. <laughs> I like mine's going to be easier to find. Yeah, mine's not going to be easy. Yeah, well, best of luck for that. <laughs> um, so we're here to talk about your short film, The Sweater. Um, let's start with the synopsis. What is The Sweater about for people who are just coming across this film? Yeah, it's basically about this guy who um, gets into a fight with his girlfriend because he's a slob, and she forces him to uh, donate his clothes, and one of the items of clothes is his favorite sweater that he's never wore, which he says in the film. <laughs> That's what he says, he's favorite. Favorite. And um, he donates it, and his friends make fun of him for listening to his girlfriend, and it's kind of about masculinity. Mm -hmm. And throughout the entire film, he's basically, it's a, kind of a hero's journey of him trying to get his sweater back to reclaim what he's think what he thinks is gonna make his life better like he thinks this is gonna solve everything in his life mm -hmm. currently like this is gonna make his friends be like oh yeah you're such a big man this is gonna fix his relationship and um yeah it's just in the pursuit of getting this one item and it just kind of plays as a comedy um but yeah that's kind of what the film is about yeah <laughs> It's, I mean, it's funny. It really is. It's really funny. Um, I'll tell you, the, uh, I've never had seen an ending to a short film both crush me and make me laugh. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about where this idea came from. Like, what, what was the genesis of this? How did you guys get to get on this project? Yeah, I mean, I called these guys. Um, we, we were working with our um, DP, uh, Richie, Richie Dang, and um, it was at a time where we weren't really getting any grants mm. and um, during that period. And um, we were kind of a little bit... He was getting cabin fever. Yeah, yeah, I was. And then um, definitely, because like, we had some success at some festivals. Like, our f films played at like Sundance. Mm -hmm. And then I called these guys when like, I had this idea. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. what did you guys... Well, uh, <laughs> and also the sweater is originally mine. A friend of mine <laughs> gave it to me as a gift. And I'm like, thank you. Uh, <laughs> maybe not my <laughs> style per se. <laughs> and I was actually thinking to get rid of it, but it, the timing worked out in a way that Matt saw the sweater and we didn't have any inspiration for anything else. So yeah. <laughs> here we are now. <laughs> so it's just the sweater with the mushroom on it, right? That's what we're talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. I feel like I'm the cold water in the story because like, I remember Maz called me on Thursday. He's like, I want to shoot this right away. Let's go. And I'm like... Let's give it time. Let's like figure out what we want to do. But we we were to camera pretty fast. Very quickly because like, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. no prep. With, like within a week we were shooting. But like I still was like I want to figure it out. Yeah, let's yeah, get a yeah, story yeah. down. Let's figure this and that. What are we doing? But we yeah. sat down and we um, uh, blocked it into parts. Like okay, the opening yeah. scene is, you know, when his girlfriend is fighting mm -hmm. with him to donate all of the clothes that he doesn't wear. 
and we're like, okay, this is a great jumping off point to then start. But, but then we also started filming things out of order. Yeah. Um, the first thing we shot was the um, thrift store right, sequence. Yeah, thrift yeah. Store. yeah. I was so curious how much of that thrift store sequence is staged <laughs> and how much is organic. That's the big question. That's the big question. We're going to keep it um, a question. <laughs> it's, it's a split, honestly. It's a it split because we, we wanted to shoot that first to see, like, do we have a movie? Well, yeah, if everything goes bad with that, then we're kind of... Uh, but it kind of went bad in a good way. Yeah. Well, we, we also, we never worked in this format. And what I mean by that, like kind of involving so much of the real world into the narrative. So we weren't sure how it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. So the idea was because the thrift store is so pivotal, if that's not going to work, yeah. let's just drop the project. But when, once we got the footage and played around with it, we're like, no, there is there is something there. Especially once the guy blocked his way, we're like, yeah, this is gold. <laughs> yeah, we had some really smart people work with us too, like in terms of... Um, visual effects like people might not notice but there's a lot of visual effects in the film i did not notice that's good <laughs> what andrew and uh daniel you guys killed it well for, for the first it, uh, we shot on the cell phone yeah okay we shot on cell phones but it looks like it's a VHS. but we did um right. i think we're like we filmed in three different thrift stores mm -hmm. and what they did was um they would change the color like one was a salvation army mm -hmm. and the guy had a blue shirt on but the guy who blocks me at the end had a red shirt on and we're like and, and i remember his girlfriend yeah. actually noticed that and i thought we could get away with it and she's like no i noticed that she knows and around. then we went um and um these vfx guys guys at um shy kids in toronto daniel who works at breathe they kind of worked on changing the color the, the, mm -hmm. the walls and just making it look like the salvation army was a value village because oh the goodness. majority of the footage is from the Value Village. And it's a small thing, but it just made it, just it look consistent. That, it's yeah. so consistent. I would have never guessed that that was filmed in multiple. It looked it looked very, like, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> consistent. I am so impressed. But we also filmed with three cameras at the same time, which gives yeah. you options. Helps of, a lot. Yeah. So yeah. it was, a, as Anya mentioned, it's a very different format than what we've done. We, we've usually done scripted, very scripted, mm -hmm. and... Um, um, single cam. Mm -hmm. So this was a bit of a departure. Fascinating. Yeah. Um, the the VHS style. I noticed that and mm. thought it was a really nice touch to it. Was that because you wanted it in VHS, or was that to help keep production consistent? What, let's talk about the visual uh, style of the film. There, I think there's like twofold reasons for that. There's, we thought that downgrading the footage would make the look more consistent mm -hmm. across the board, which is obviously really important. Mm -hmm. And we are kind of like 90s indie yeah. nerds and we wanted to kind of capture that feeling of like 90s indie movies where, you know, there's a little bit of run and gun and, and shoot and just make something. We miss that movie. era, honestly. We talk yeah. about that era quite a bit. I mean, there is, you know. Like the true independent. But, but, but even 90s, yes, but even some early 2000s. I think 28 Days was early 2000s. And yeah, Bamboozled. We yeah. looked at Bamboozled. We looked at um, films that shot on mini DV. And, and we were just like, oh, wow. These are, and, you know, there's the early Safdie Brothers shorts. Mm -hmm. Uh, John's Gone was one that I was, you know, I'm, I am love that short so much. And we were like, you know what? Like, why? But but it wasn't like 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 it was an idea that we were messing around, but it really came to fruition um, uh, when the post house that I mentioned, Shy Kids, were like, mm -hmm. we should make it like this because the way it's all shot, uh, the way that it's shot is very voyeuristic, and I think that kind of um, VHS aesthetic just makes it feel a little dirtier, mm -hmm. which I kind of like. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of films also are filmed that way. I I feel I feel like everybody. Especially in Toronto, I feel that everybody kind of wants the slick look. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for something like this, it just gave it a bit more charm, too, I feel. Well, it takes also, you back to an era. I feel like we, could, we couldn't we could afford the slick look, so we right. decided to embrace what we can do and kind of do the best with it. So. Guys, I respect that so much because, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to have all the resources that you want to make a film look exactly mm. the way that you want. And sometimes you just kind of have to work with what you have mm. and, and make it work. And, you know, sometimes you can see when those, I don't want to call them deficiencies, but those like maybe imperfections are, are there and, and you kind of, you know, suspension of disbelief and everything. But it's so consistent here. Oh, cool. It's yeah. so good. It was good to hear, yeah. Yeah, no, I loved it. I really did. I really did. I loved it so much, I forgot my next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, let's talk about the theme, masculinity. Sure. and yeah. Because, like I said, the ending both crushed me and make me laugh at, this, at the same time, which is, which is so fascinating with this story. Um, 
talk to me about what you wanted to convey here, what you wanted to communicate, and what you want people to take away from this movie. Yeah, I mean, I kind of noticed that with each screening, too, that the film is really about a guy who listens to everybody by himself as well. You know, when his girlfriend says, get rid of the sweater, he does. When his friends tell him to go get it back, he does. And then um, at the end, I think he realizes that he's like, oh, I did everything that they told me to, but I haven't done what I want and none of this, you know, matters. And I think in life too, I said it last night at the Q&A, in life I feel like we all, and like for me it's true, we chase like very tiny things that we give meaning to and then when we don't get it, it absolutely crushes you. Yeah. But then when you look at the bigger picture, you're like, oh, that little thing really didn't matter that much, but why was it so... Why did it feel like a giant cloud? And I think really that's what the film is about. And the masculinity portion of it as well. I mean, I feel like everyone's seen the kind of bros in the bar giving you the worst advice. And you're like, who are, who are these idiots to tell this other <laughs> you idiot? You qualified to give yeah. advice. I mean, I'm n not to say that, oh, yeah, this is, you know, um, what, my, what my friends are like. But I feel like people, it's. I feel like it's an accurate representation of what kind of goes on mm -hmm. in like um, with younger men where one thing happens and then they give you the worst advice and then you kind of spiral mm -hmm. and you're like, oh my God, why did I listen to them? Why did I do that? Um, and I think the main part of the film too that we wanted to con convey was the obsession, mm -hmm. you know, like his OCD. And I think he's truly like a character who like lacks any kind of confidence um, and yeah, I mean, it was, it was also really inspired by, there's a great J Duplass and Mark Duplass short called, um, this is, J this is John. Mm -hmm. Um, it could be something else. I'm totally wrong, but it's, but it's the one where he's answering the voicemail and it, we really wanted that similar tone of the obsessiveness where he's just trying to record a perfect, uh, voicemail and he keeps mm -hmm. failing and it's, it's such a small, and you're like, oh my, and he's just obsessing over it and obsessing over it. And we kind of wanted a little bit of that feeling as well. There's yeah. definitely that obsessive <laughs> nature to it. <laughs> yeah, I, saying, I think I remember early on we were discussing that when he is going to steal the sweater back, that it's sort of like he's stealing his manhood back. At least in his view, he's stealing yeah. his manhood <laughs> back. Reclaiming. But, Which is so fascinating. Just buy the sweater. You yeah. know, that's kind of what <laughs> yeah. I thought. But, like, but it can't then, be like, that much. <laughs> but then in the end he realizes, or the, at least we hope the audience realizes, that that sort of like picture of what manhood is in our society is an illusion right it's yeah, just something definitely. that we've ascribed and created and then i guess it hits hard for the character i don't know if he would actually have the realization but the point is that the audience has that realization oh i did yeah, okay i yeah. keep talking about the ending let's just yeah. like <laughs> yes, address yeah. it very quickly so i know so he comes back to his friends and he's looking for that uh, that support and validation. that validation uh from his friends and they just don't give it to him in that moment i'm like bro <laughs> oh i am feeling for you right now well they say good job they say good job but it's so passive it's you. so yeah. like yeah. oh you did that yeah. okay yeah. you know it's like, like you, they do. you're still on that topic <laughs> right yeah. exactly uh and i just so like that moment was big and then and then he takes the beer. Was that scripted? Was taking no, none of it. None not. of it was scripted. No. Though. And funny enough, our the other actor didn't even notice it. He's like, "Wait, what? Did you take yeah. my beer?" Which yeah. is exactly the point. It's so good. Yeah. He's a he's a thief. He's a constant thief. He steals well, it's, like a, beer. it's like a little win. Yeah, right? it's a little yeah. win. Like I think that it was such yeah. a big moment because you know we're talking about how he spends this whole movie just like doing what other people say and following everyone else's instructions. <laughs> but then there's this beer he was told he can't have, and he's like. Just takes it. I'm yeah. <laughs> I think this, he's, he's we, we always talk about for our films, like we have a uh, feature film too, and we kind of talk about structure a lot. We're like, we think when you have any kind of character, they can't lose all the time. Mm -hmm. They also have to win. And throughout this film too, there's points where he wins and he loses. Even in the first bar scene too, I, I think I originally talked about how they have to kind of make him feel bad. Mm -hmm. But it was weird. We started They're improvising like it. To but do they inspired. It was weird. Like because when we started talking, they just inspired me naturally, and it feels like a win when we high five and we're like, yeah. yeah. And then it cuts, and I'm in the donation box trying to get it. <laughs> it that's a win for that character because they gave him this yeah. like false 
Confidence. Uh, confidence. Yeah. yeah. And I think that it always, we always follow that structure of like the character has to win, lose, win, lose. Like the first scene is a lose and the bar scene's a win. And we just kind of follow that structure all the way. And the thing is, even when he steals the sweater and he runs away, uh, I remember there was one reaction. I think it was in Toronto when we first screened it. When he stole it, people started clapping for him. And then when he goes into the bar and he presents it, that's a lose. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't give the reaction. And then I, th- I, I guess maybe when I'm acting in the scene too, I was like, in my head, I was like, no, I want to win so badly. And I take the beer. <laughs> yeah. And you know what I mean? Like there's, there's so you know, that structure is really important to me. I feel like if you, if, if a character just constantly loses all the time, how can you care for him? And if he wins all the time, then he's invincible, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. So we really like to follow that structure. Even though the film is incredibly low stakes, we like to make it feel as high, like as if he if he doesn't get, this is the most important thing right now for this character. This is the high point of his life at this time. The mushroom yeah. said. <laughs> you, can, you can see like, a, like some big budget movies that get a lot of backlash. It's, a lot of times like a character that never loses mm-hmm. and you're like okay well this person's invincible yeah they're I superman mean, yeah yep. exactly I, i'm like i was gonna say bullets I always are have bouncing hard, off i always have a hard time connecting with superman it blows like, my mind that there are so many god. superman movies like yeah yeah like, this guy is invincible <laughs> how are we making so many movies about this but so, the inverse yeah. too if the person's just losing the audience goes how how can i identify with the most pathetic person yeah. and they can be <laughs> pathetic but the thing is, it's interesting when the pathetic character wins. Yeah. And then it's interesting when the really strong character is vulnerable and weak. Yeah. You kind of have to have that balance, balance yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. And we try to do that with... Because that's with life. Fun. That's life, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got deep. <laughs> that's so cool, guys. Um, so it's playing here at Vancouver. Yeah. Um, really excited for more people to see it. Uh, what does it mean to you guys to have this film playing here at the Vancouver International Film Festival? Um, we're originally from Toronto and it's our third time in Vancouver. We love this festival. It, w- it was the first probably festival that our film got into, so we're de- we hold it deep to our heart. Pre- yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, it was our first movies. big festival yeah, like back yeah, in 2021. Yeah, yeah. Anya um, directed a film that I produced um, like we made together and uh, we were just submitting to festivals and, th- and it was the first big film festival um, that we got into and then the next year we made another film and we were very lucky to um, win Best Canadian Short mm-hmm. wow. so uh, VIF has always championed us yeah, like the he, programmers the people us, yeah. and the audiences are absolutely amazing yeah. the audience, they're very they're, they're, they're yeah last night they were they're they reactive practice, they were laughing they were hooting you could hear yeah, yeah, yeah you could hear you could hear the reaction it was they're great. not reserved yeah. at all yeah. they'll, they'll feel things they'll yeah. say things things they'll oh my god this and that to every film which was kind of awesome mm. and the lineup every year the lineup of films yeah. it was great fantastic yeah, the programmers kill it the filmmakers kill it and it's really it as this year especially like seeing the program a really diverse set of films tonally culturally uh, genre wise and yeah. it's just awesome to be in a program like that it was very welcoming to us and we're just very happy to be here so yeah that's incredible well congratulations guys I yeah, thank I'm you so, so happy we're able to talk about this film and that it's <laughs> going out to the public more and so I wish you guys the best of luck going forward okay <laughs> <laughs>